द स्टोरीज ऑफ महाभारत वेलकम डियर फ्रेंड्स टू नदर एपिसोड ऑफ द स्टोरीज ऑफ महाभारत इन द लास्ट एपिसोड वी हर्ड द स्टोरी ऑफ भीमस क्वेस्ट फॉर द डिवाइन लोटस एंड इज एनकाउंटर विथ इज इमोटल ब्रदर द ग्रेट लॉर्ड हनुमान One day the Pandavas saw the sky light up above them as a huge and gorgeous airship appeared from behind the clouds with a thunderous roar the airship glided through the air and slowly landed in the yard in front of them Matali the driver of the celestial chariot opened the door and the pandavas saw their brother arjuna sitting inside wearing golden armor glittering jewels and fine clothes arjuna jumped out of the chariot and ran to his brothers he bowed down in front of daumya yudhishthira and bhima and paid his respects he hugged nakula and sahadeva in a warm embrace matali helped arjuna unload the divine weapons he had acquired from indra and the precious gifts he brought from the heavens arjuna took the gifts he brought for draupadi and went inside to meet her when draupadi saw him she was ecstatic with joy she embraced arjuna and said thank the gods you are back i was so worried for you the heavens are not for the mortals and i always felt scared if something bad had happened to you Arjuna smiled and said You have no faith in me nobody could ever stop me from coming back to you He gave her the gifts he brought from the heavens and said These are the jewelry and costumes that the apsaras and goddesses wear now you will wear them Draupadi was happy like a child The next morning Lord Indra visited the Pandavas in his flying chariot. He called Yudhishthira and said, "You may now go back to the Kamyaka forest. Be rest assured, you will once again rule the earth. Your brother Arjuna has acquired the deadliest of weapons and the skills required to use them." He also paid me his dues by completing a difficult mission for me. I can tell you armed with my weapons he is undefeatable in any battle he fights After Indra's departure Yudhishthira asked Arjuna brother tell us what mission did you conduct for Lord Indra Arjuna said after the completion of my training Lord Indra said my son now you must pay me my fees my guru dakshina i said anything you ask the lord smiled and said deep in the ocean in an impenetrable fortress live 30 million of my most vicious enemies the giant demons called the nibata kabachas destroy them and that will be my guru dakshina my fees I put on my armor, picked up my Gandiva, and mounted Indra's chariot. Matali, the charioteer, took me deep into the oceans to the fortress of the Nibata Kabachas. As the demons noticed my arrival, they attacked me in hordes with spears, maces, swords, and many other weapons. I took up my Gandiva and began to spray them with arrows, killing thousands at a time. The demons. then invoked their magic powers and began to shower me with huge rocks blasted me with strong winds tried to burn me with fire storms soon i was engulfed in darkness i pulled out my magic buster weapon and hurled it towards the demons and the illusion cleared up 
the demons then began to hurl huge boulders at Matali and me. Soon we were covered under a huge pile of rocks which formed a cavern around us. Matali said, Arjuna, use the thunderbolt weapon Indra gave you. That will destroy them all. I picked up the thunderbolt and as Lord Indra had instructed me, I set it up, uttered the mantra and hurled it at the demons. With a loud roar, the weapon blew away the rocks and landed amongst the demons with a huge explosion. The single blast killed all the demons in an instant. Matali and I climbed out of the cave and walked into the fortress. It was indeed a spectacular city. I said, Matali, this city looks like it is better than Indra's city in the heavens. Why don't the gods live here? Matali said, Once upon a time, this city belonged to Indra. Empowered by Brahma's blessings, the Nibata Kabacha demons drove out the gods and occupied this city. When Indra asked Brahma, he said, It is destined that you would destroy these demons, but in a different form. That is why Indra taught you, his son, the use of these weapons. On our way back, we saw a beautiful airborne city, lit with bright and colourful lights hovering in the sky. Matali said, This is Hiranyapura, the great city created by Brahma. Pulama and Kalaka, two demon women, worshipped Brahma for thousands of years. Pleased with their devotion, Lord Brahma granted them a boon. Their sons, Paulam and Kalkya would be indestructible to gods and demons and they would live in this wonderful city. These demons are Lord Indra's sworn enemies. You should destroy them. I asked Matali to take me close to the city. When the demons saw us approaching, they recognized Indra's chariot and attacked us with a volley of deadly weapons. I deflected their weapons and launched my counterattack. My arrows killed thousands of demons. I hurled powerful missiles at the city. The flying city dodged my attack by rising up, going down or moving sideways. Hundreds and thousands of ferocious demons came out of the city in spectacular flying chariots and began to fight me. They surrounded me and stopped any weapon I threw at them. I began to panic and prayed to Lord Shiva for his permission to use the fierce Pashupat weapon named Raudra. The deadly weapon was my last resort as it can destroy anything that came on its way. As I engaged the weapon, a strange man appeared before me. He had three faces, nine eyes and six arms. His matted hair glowed like a thousand suns with fiery serpents surrounding them. It was Lord Shiva himself. I asked for his blessings and launched his Pashupat weapon. As soon as the weapon left my Gandiva, something fascinating happened. Thousands of fierce animals, elephants, lions, tigers and snakes appeared from nowhere and attacked the demons. Thousands of armed soldiers from the gods, Gandharvas, Yakshas and Rakshasas appeared and pounced on the enemies. I was no longer alone. With Lord Shiva's blessings, I had a huge army fighting for me. I regained my confidence and began to kill the demons in hordes and soon the city of Hiranyapura was free of the evil demons. When we returned to the heavens, Lord Indra was overjoyed to hear about my conquest. He praised me and said, My son, you will be invincible in the battlefield. Bhishma, Drona, Kripa, Karna and all their allies taken together won't be a fraction of your strength and prowess. Then he gave me an indestructible armor 
a golden garland and the celebrated conch shell named devadatta and many other heavenly costumes and jewelry after spending 5 years with my father indra i asked for his permission to come back to you listening to these glorious tales from arjuna yudhishthira was overwhelmed with joy he said arjuna tomorrow please give us a demonstration of the weapons you brought with you next morning when arjuna prepared to give a demonstration of his divine weapons the air stood still the ocean swelled the sun didn't rise and darkness covered the earth watching this ominous signs rishi narada came to arjuna and said do not use the divine weapons without a proper cause misusing these weapons can result in grave consequences use them only when you fight your fiercest enemies and only when you have no other option yudhishthira then asked arjuna to retract his weapons and things returned to normal once again After spending 10 years of their exile period Bhima called upon Yudhishthira and said We are on our 11th year of exile as per our promise we will have to go into hiding on our 13th year I think it is high time to begin preparations for the battle ahead of us Yudhishthira concurred with Bhima's proposal The Pandavas left the Gandhamadana mountains arrived in the bishakayupa forest near the source of the river yamuna and decided to make it their home for the rest of the year one day bhima went out in the forest to hunt while strolling through the thick foliage and looking for a deer to hunt a huge mountain snake pounced on him from the tree above and coiled around bhima in a tight embrace <coughs> the mighty prince tried hard to escape but the snake constricted his body so tight that bhima suffocated and was about to pass out surprised by the snake's tremendous strength bhima asked in a feeble voice no ordinary snake can overpower me tell me who are you the snake answered i am king nahusha your ancestor cursed by rishi agastya i have become a snake it's been a long time since i had anything to eat today i got lucky and found you my prey i will devour you and satisfy my hunger saying so the snake tightened his grip a little more to make sure bhima is robbed of all his strength in the meantime in the bishakayupa ashram yudhishthira felt uneasy as if something terrible was about to happen he came out of his hut and saw arjuna nakula sahadeva and draupadi but bhima was missing he asked where is bhima draupadi said bhima has gone out to hunt a while ago he should have been back by now yudhishthira knew bhima must be in some sort of danger he took priest dhoumya along and walked into the forest looking for bhima Yudhishthira knew wherever Bhima went he would leave a wide track of broken trees and uprooted shrubs following the trail they soon arrived at a place where Bhima lay crushed inside the serpent Nahusha's deadly coil Yudhishthira knelt before the snake and said O oh, great snake spare my brother i will provide you with whatever food you desire Nahusha said this man as my prey and he will be my meal today nothing else could satisfy me go away else i will catch you and eat you too 
But Yudhishthira did not leave. He said, King Nahusha, I won't go without my brother. Tell me, what else can I do to make you spare my brother? Nahusha said, All right, if you can answer my questions, I will release your brother. Ask me whatever you wish. I will answer to the best of my ability, said Yudhishthira. Nahusha asked, You seem to be a smart person. I have two questions for you. Tell me, who is a true Brahmin? What is the ultimate knowledge? Yudhishthira answered, One who is kind, truthful, generous, non-violent, good-natured and learned is a true Brahmin. The supreme Brahman, who is beyond happiness or sorrow, the knowledge of whom frees us from all grief, is the ultimate knowledge. The serpent said, But sutras, the men of the lower caste, can also possess the traits you mention, and nothing is beyond happiness and sorrow. Yudhishthira said, If a sudra possess those traits I mention, then he should be a Brahmin. And if a Brahmin doesn't exhibit these virtues, then he is nothing but a Sudra. You may say whatever you like, but I believe that the knowledge of the Supreme Brahman frees us from all attachments. The snake said, If the virtues make a person a Brahmin, then one cannot belong to the Brahmin caste until he masters them all. Yudhishthira stood up and then he said, O great snake, I believe there exists no pure race or pure caste. The human race is a product of interracial unions. Hence, it is impossible to claim someone of a pure race or pure caste. Nahusha, the snake, was pleased with Yudhishthira's answers and he released Bhima from his grip. He then had a long discussion on philosophy and theology with Yudhishthira. Later, Yudhishthira asked, You are one of the most knowledgeable persons I ever met. Why did you have to suffer this misfortune? Nahusha sighed and said, I was one of the most powerful kings of the heavens. I travelled on airships. I was revered by gods, Gandharvas and the Rishis. They paid me taxes. A thousand Brahmin Rishis pulled my carriage. One day, when Rishi Agastya was carrying me, my feet touched his head. The Rishi felt insulted and cursed me. I turned into a snake and fell from the heavens on to the earth. I cried and prayed for mercy. Agastya had pity on me and said, One day, the great king Yudhishthira, the son of Dharma, would free you of your curse. Today is the day. Thank you for coming to me and relieving me of my sin. Saying so, the Nahusha shed off his snake body and departed for the heavens. Yudhishthira, Bhima and Dhaumya returned to their ashram to join the rest of the Pandavas. Music